What's up, well, welcome back to the channel. I'm back on university campus today to find out how teaching has been adapted due to the new COVID restrictions. I'll also be showing you guys around the facilities we've got here. Later on in the video, I've also invited the head of the department as well as other lecturers to answer the questions you guys have been asking me. But before we get started, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you want to know more about what life is like as a physio student in London. And because I'm already in the gym, I'll show you guys around this place. On the right side, we've got stairs and we use that to learn different gait patterns going up and down the stairs. We've also got a speaker and we'll be using that obviously because everyone will be wearing face masks and it'll be hard to shout down this gym. On the left side we've got a dual cable machine, some benches, some small dumbbells and this is storeroom. Oh let's have a look if it's open. Oh, we have got some walking frames, crutches. Let's see what else we've got here. Oh, let's get my way through here speakers for music we've got some cones balls oh these are incredible gliding plates so good for a doctor rehab um, skipping rope more tennis balls bean bags small dumbbells and rackets load of exercise bands resistant bands and oh we've got some putty this is incredible for um, hand dexterity rehab some balls Ankle weights. The university really promotes us to be creative with our rehab, so it's fantastic to have all these different equipment and tools for us to come up with um, treatments. Here we've got an armchair, and this is actually the armchair patients use in hospitals, so we really try to mimic the environment uh, of a hospital. And we've got mirrors here, and <laughs> you can tell there's a lot of um, tapes and stickers here for visual feedback while we do rehab. Being back in this gym actually reminds me of a tutorial we had about a year ago where we had to take our tops off and walk up and down this gym for about 10 minutes and your partner had to analyze your gait, your walking pattern and at the end of the session you describe what your partner's gait pattern was and others had to guess who it was. Uh, so that was really really fun, definitely one of my favorite ones. And here we've got some parallel bars, an amazing set of kit for gait rehab People can hold on to the rails and do some standing exercises as well as walking through the gate holding on to both sides of the rail. So depending on what modules you're taking, you could have your exams here. I remember doing one here with five, six stations in this gym and you were given a scenario and 10 minutes to prepare a treatment plan for that scenario where your, or one of your friends will be your model and you're allowed to use any tools and equipment you can find in this gym. So anything uh, I showed you earlier in the storeroom you could use those for your treatment. So it was fun, but um, not fun at the same time, if you know what I mean. Right, time to take you guys into your other rooms. So coming through the front door, here's the main reception area. I remember there used to be a lot of sofas around here, but obviously because of the new restrictions, we now have socially distanced tables. Let's have a look at this skill room. Some more equipment over here. We've got hospital beds. Oh, check this out. This is the cricket. We use this for standing practices with the patients. And obviously, this equipment will make our learning a bit more practical and more realistic to our real life situations. And we share these with the occupational therapist as well. But let's head upstairs to where we have most of our tutorials. Lift or stairs? Lift, stairs. Yeah, of course stairs. Of course. Because we're all health advocates, I remember at the start of the year, whoever doesn't walk and takes a lift instead, gets quite a lot of stick from the rest of the group. It's actually incredible how many of these antibacterial wipe stations there are in this building. Much needed. Here we go. Ta-da! So most of our tutorials in these rooms, there are actually now six student bubbles. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So students are only allowed to have practical hands-on assessments and treatments within their bubble. 
I totally understand why you guys watching this video right now will be worried about coming back into uni, having face-to-face -face teaching and being in close contact with your colleagues and lecturers, but I've got someone special, actually a few of them, um, to reassure you of that. And by the way, meet my friend Jimenez. John, how has teaching been adapted due to the new COVID restrictions? Okay, that's a good question. Uh, we've made lots of changes. Um, you know, many changes have been forced upon us. Uh, the team have been fantastic, uh, they have taken to it with great energy and they have been adapting all of their teaching. And there's two main ways in which we've adapted. One is the development of a lot of uh, interactive online material for our students. So this is where we've been making lots of video resources, of clinical techniques, mm -hmm. assessments, treatments, so that students can link in wherever they are and access that learning material. But also we've been delivering a lot of live interactive sessions through something, we, uh, we use something called Blackboard Collaborate. This is an online platform uh, that's been developed for education and our team use this regularly now. So we will arrange for our students to link in and we'll have interactive lectures and seminars with them so they can discuss with us, ask questions and learn material at hand. So this has been uh, very positive actually and um, students have found this a really good way of engaging with the programme. The other thing that we've had to do obviously is adapt our teaching here on the campus. And we have uh, lovely clinical skills rooms um, all set up to accommodate 24 students at a time but we've had to adapt the way that we deliver the teaching in those rooms. Simple things like ensuring adequate distancing within the classrooms. So during the session, students are arranged into student bubbles, uh, the term we use, and this is where students are arranged as very small groups of four, and this is the group in which they will practice their clinical skills. So they're allowed to practice on each other, but they're not allowed to practice on any other students outside of that bubble. And it's just a simple way of preventing uh, spread of infection. Within the classes, we of course wear all the usual uh, personal protective equipment. Uh, we have masks, visors, aprons, gloves. Not that you have to wear those all the time, but of course, when there is a technique being practiced, uh, particularly maybe the techniques around the shoulder, we will put on the full PPE equipment. Whereas if we're doing a seminar where there's no contact, we might just wear the visor. So we adapt to uh, the situation at hand, um, but all the time making sure that our students are safe. Other things, routines such as regular hand washing, use of a hand sanitizer, washing down equipment before and after use, washing our hands between practicing on different students, all the usual routines that you'd expect to see. And of course, it's the sort of thing our students are experienced of, uh, experienced at when they go out in their clinical placements. These are the normal procedures that are now part of clinical practice. This is the new working environment. Yeah. So students have to get used to it here on campus uh, before they go out into the hospitals. And our aim is that by the time they reach the hospitals, it's just second nature to them, it's all routine, and it's just normal. That was super important, John. Amazing, amazing. Um, how has the pandemic really affected just ran out of battery, so we're back in it again. Has the global pandemic affected students' placements in any way? Yes, uh, clearly, yes. Um, in the acute stages of the pandemic, placements were disrupted quite severely. And you can imagine, hospitals were under severe strain and it was very difficult for them to provide placements in the normal way. So placements uh, in the normal sense nearly all stopped for a period of time. Um, and then we've been going through a process of adapting them, uh, delivering them in different ways. And I must say, uh, thankfully recently, uh, we are starting to get back to normal with uh, the number of placements being provided, getting back to normal levels. We still have some catching up to do uh, for the people who've had delayed placements, but um, it's very reassuring to see that the hospitals in particular have really stepped up and are starting to provide more placements. And it's in their interest, of course. Uh, providing placements is the main way in which they secure their new staff. 
Um, so they want students to come out on placement, they want them to finish their programme and get out into the jobs market so that they have the new batch of physiotherapists uh, to employ. So uh, very disruptive and the students uh, were incredibly resilient, incredibly adaptive um, at, at dealing with the, that upheaval. Um, but they've, they've done really well, you know, they've stuck with it, they've, been, uh, they've uh, often found their own placements or worked with the staff to innovate and develop new types of placements. And uh, I must say that some of the placements that have occurred have been absolutely fantastic. Um, there's been online placements, research placements, it's been fantastic to see. But, um, but yes, yeah, so thankfully we are now getting back towards normal and uh, we're feeling quite assured that things will, be, um, things will be back to normal for the coming year. Right, Tom, should students be worried about coming into uni and having face-to-face -face teaching again? Uh, I don't think so, no. Um, admittedly, I was a little worried before I kind of came back to campus and got to see how it was all going to be, um, how it was going to be delivered, but you know, we've got the tech in situ now, so we've got rooms and microphones in, we've got our little bubble set up, um, we've done some practice runs and running the online sessions as well. So um, I was a little bit nervous to start with, but actually really I'm just now really excited to start doing face-to-face -face teaching again. Admittedly people will have masks on, but um, it's just really good fun. The, the tutorial sessions are enjoyable, they're hands-on, and um, yeah, I'm just excited to get started again really. Yeah, so I think, um, as always, Brunel does have quite a good reputation, I think, for how accessible staff are. Um, arguably now, staff are probably even more accessible because of how easy it is just to jump on a 15-20 minute call with somebody, video call. But we're not just going to be doing video calls. Um, even after we finish recording this, I'm going to have a face-to-face -face meeting with a student to go for a walk around campus. Um, I mean, luckily, I normally do walking meetings anyway, but uh, given that we're kind of meant to be limiting the amount of face-to-face -face contact now, I know that a lot of the staff actually are quite excited at the prospect of going for a little walk, a lap of the campus with students, so that we can actually <laughs> have that face-to-face -face interaction still. Yeah. Finally, have you got any advice for new students that are coming in, so whether that's the BSc course or the Masters course? Um, I think all I would say is that the um, COVID-19 pandemic has done nothing but show that going into healthcare is an amazing profession to go into. Um, you certainly have job security um, at a time when there's lots of insecurity around things like employment, but also the massive numbers of people who you know, went back into doing clinical work, who had been working in community posts, or people who stepped outside their comfort zone. The, the pandemic I think, has really just shone quite an amazing light for healthcare professionals across the board, uh, obviously including physiotherapists. So, you know, you're choosing an awesome profession to go into, um, of physiotherapy, but also just an awesome career path of working in healthcare, I think. Yeah. Didn't you go back into working as well during the pandemic? I did, yeah, I did uh, five weeks back, kind of at the height of the pandemic, um, back at my old hospital again, um, which, again, you know, I got to work with, I was working on ICU with colleagues who had specialised in MSK years ago, one of my colleagues who's a specialist in treating um, people who have got chronic pain after suffering torture, you know, it's a million miles away from working on intensive care, but there we were doing night shifts together and, you know, eating the food which we were getting sent in the staff room. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it, it was a pretty awesome feeling of togetherness, I would say. Well, there you have it. You heard it from the two main men. One thing I really love about being at Brunel is that close-knit relationship between students and the staff. Um, we address each other by our first names, something I haven't done in the past. But thank you guys for tuning in to this video. I hope you enjoyed this one. I've got a few interesting video planned for next week, so stay tuned for that. Don't forget to subscribe, all that jazz, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cause we're